Hey guys, welcome to Kitten's Corner and welcome to uh, the third installment on Rooting Hair. As you can see, I actually got a little bit started, but that was more for me for a little practice run. Um, definitely, we are a long way from being done with this little project, but I did want to get started and hit on some great points for you and root a little bit, and then we'll, we will we will get her finished. Of course, our goal, of course, is always to get the doll completely rooted, just to show you her face. And that's her little face. She's been sitting there chilling and resting for a while. And um, I did take a time out, which is always great, guys. If you feel like you're burning out, you feel like you're getting there, that's when you stop. Because mistakes happen when we rush. Okay, so some of the things you're going to need for Rudy is um, a soft thing to lay her head, which I have a very comfortable blanket. So no matter how she's sitting, her pain is not rubbing on anything but the blanket. And while I'm just talking about that, make sure you remember that she is a painted item. And the more vigorously you rub on the spot, it's just kind of like putting, pulling the paint, um, rubbing, trying to rub the paint off. And um, no, not that that would be your intent, but it could definitely rub off, which would be aggravating, especially around the ears. When you're rooting around the ears because it's second nature to do this so rooting the front and you'll definitely rub that spot over and over again so avoid doing that as much as possible know that your doll even as well as your paint is is still indeed paint on vinyl <laughs> which is an interesting combination and I know with my heat set, and I'm pretty sure user error could be a factor, but I know with my heat set, if I wasn't careful, it rubbed off, especially on the tops of the ears, and I had to do some recon, or re, um, definitely repaint near the ears, but I'm not really sure about this air dry, this is my first time using this particular air dry, so we're definitely going to have a learning curve on that. All right. You, tools you're gonna need a pair of scissors have my handy dandy go to's these are actually my third or fourth pair um, some have been two I know are lost one is actually with my um, hair bows and stuff because when I do my granddaughter's hair she used rubber bands I don't want to break her hair out so I carefully slide and pop them so that's why the better of the two is sitting in the hair thing. But this one will do perfectly fine. You're going to need needles. And needles you could definitely get from Michael's. Um, Hobby Lobby has them. These are actually from Hobby Lobby. You can definitely get quote unquote rooting needles from um, Irresistible. Bountiful Baby I believe sells them. I want to say my fair since I haven't really... Uh, purchased anything from McPherson so I don't want to misquote and say they have it and they don't so I really need to I guess get on that website and see what they actually offer but and you're going to need a comb or an or a brush they strongly suggest a toothbrush because it's gentle and it's going to get the hair separated the way you need it but um on my older babies, I'd lean towards getting just a regular hairbrush and a uh, um, comb so that I can make sure because I'm using a thicker type of hair and I'm using a um, using it's a wider going to be a wider scan, a wider surface rather. So let's kind of just hop right in here. And when the first thing you need to do is get your hair course <laughs> and decide where you're going with the length usually I work with hair that has a weight which means it's a hard piece of cloth that is all sold to this hair does not so I went halfway up and I snipped it right there I usually put it where I have the where it's naturally not curved 
because when you root it in, the straight part will go into the hair. I mean, we'll go into the to the doll, and it'll literally start off a curl right off the bat, which is really pretty if done right. Okay, so we I've taken the liberty to already have slip, slip, snipped some. <laughs> So we already got some snipped. I gotta put myself in focus. And you want to make sure that it's straight. You want to make sure there is no whole bunch of loose ends. And then you need to decide the directional of that you want the hair to go. Now with this baby, we want to we want to literally I'm gonna use my needle <laughs> to draw to imaginary draw. If you can imagine her part is right here her nose is right there and we're going to go back I'm gonna see if I can slide her a little bit so you can see a little better okay so say her nose is here and most people part their hair right at the nose and so she would have a ponytail going this way and a ponytail going that well so that's what you're imagining because you're I'm imagining she's at the age where it's going to be either up in the ponytail down with a bow in the front and, and or with two ponytails on either side is that's how I would do her hair um, you could also but if you're a hair person like me you're probably gonna have days where you're gonna want to part it and put all kind of ponytails and snap snaps in her head so you need to make sure that the person if the person is that type of person they can do that so when it falls naturally we're going to root it so that it falls this way, this way, and then literally makes that natural U in the back. And that's kind of where I started rooting because I wanted it to start falling that way. So if this was a smaller baby, you would take either chalk or um, a, painting, a painting pen. But remember, if you use a painting pen, it's going to be permanent on their head. You can't wash it off. If you use chalk, you could just give her a good gentle wash after it's done and get all the paint get all the chalk off rather and you so you want it to look like we're coming off of that curl and if you mapped it that's where the curl would be at the crown of her head so she's she's supposed to be a four or five year old so she definitely is not going to walk around with a swirl in the back of her head if she was a, a boy baby you may want to enforce that a little bit more so but she's not so we're not gonna worry about that all right so when you're doing your baby you want to make sure that you the hair is facing opposite of how you want it to lay I'm sorry facing the way you, you can either whatever is comfortable for you I'm left-handed so probably going to be telling you this stuff in reverse we're going to slide her over a little bit you want to not rush you want to get your needle warmed up and when I say because it is metal if you rush you will see your needle bending if you're not paying attention your needle will keep on bending and you're not paying attention and it will eventually snap and this could be an expensive rooting job or an inexpensive rooting job depending on how many needles you have to go through and if you go through too many you have to go purchase them or order them and wait for them to come in so it's going to cost you money to get the needles and time to wait for it to come they do make um felting needles with handles if you feel if this is uncomfortable for you definitely invest in you a good handle they also make rooting sets where the needles ha are in a little wooden bub i do have one uh for me personally i feel like it get puts makes the needle vulnerable because the needle you don't have as much as control and um for me it wasn't comfortable but it could definitely work for you if you want to try it it's definitely if you have like if your fingers get tired easily you may want to invest in some type of handle so that you're not just pressing on and even these needles you can find them with the little purple just a little rubber thing there but i like to to hold them like this and um it doesn't it doesn't affect my fingers as bad as it probably should so now let's directionally root this little one's head so however you want it to fall 
your needle needs to be going at the kind of at the opposite angle. If I, that can make sense. Let's see. Okay, so your needle needs to be at an angle so that when it's pushing the hair in, it's going to drop kind of at an angle to the way you push the needle in. Believe me, I don't really know how to explain it where it would just flow and you'd be like, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense because I honestly have watched so many people root dolls here and we're still like, wait, what? What are you doing? But once you find that position that works for you and you find how holding the needle works for you, you're, you'll never lose it and you'll never miss root again as we would say so you want to lay your hair and it's gonna splay naturally on its own and you definitely want to aim at the ends that are kind of by the what i say singled out and we're gonna push in this chair is rolling with us and i push all the way to where it stops naturally on its own because you want every piece of that hair to go you want it to go in as far as for the length of your needle you will feel the hair slide out of your hand so you don't want to be holding this tight but you do want to make sure you have a good grip you're going to pull it out and I'm doing this slowly so that you can see then I'll show you how much of the hair should have actually went in when you lift up You'll see a piece of hair. It seems like, oh, that was super simple. And it is falling this way. Boom. That's exactly what we wanted it to do. And the cool thing is you get to do that 455 more times. <laughs> I'm playing. I'm not really sure. But you need to do it. You need to make sure it's full. You need to be stopping to make sure you're not leaving gaps in between. Some people do do the multiple rooting. Which basically means you're going to hit the needle in and take it out. Hit it in a little further away and take it out. I definitely would say if you're rushing, if you're in a hurry, then you don't need to be rooting here. But if you take your time, even with this method, make sure you're only doing two to three. And make sure you're taking your time pulling it out. I don't know if you saw it, but this whole hair kind of curled into itself and then came back, came back down. And that means that it could get tangled really fast. So you need to be making sure you're paying attention to that. Um, definitely in the center, you're definitely only aiming to try to get one or two strands. <coughs> Excuse me, only one or two strands. And when we edge out our front, we definitely only aim for one. It's time consuming, yes, but does it look right when you're done? Absolutely, it looks gorgeous. You want The illusion is to make sure it looks like it's coming out of the baby's head. And I can sit and do this for hours, but I only do it for about three or four hours a pop. I pick two good movies, run them. Um, usually when this first movie ends, I go get a water break, stretch my legs, and then start the next movie and get back started um if you feel yourself burning out that's a great time to stop and just start again the next day and if you notice there's a gap i know i've been kind of popping a video every day or so but i took some time off because when you get burned out you do bad jobs and that's on any job and they say if you find something you love you never work a day in your life that's a fib. It still works. You just don't get burned out as fast. Now, if you decide to make this hobby a career, definitely take into consideration that now you have the pressure of you need to get stuff done because it is your source of income. <laughs> then you definitely need to, to make sure you're not getting burned out. You don't want to do a bad job because it doesn't matter if you crank out $30.00 in their garbage i mean or don't look good you need 30 you if you crank out two or three dollars a month and they're gorgeous and people buy them and they're paying a good nice amount for them then it's well worth it to just get 
two or three out a month and have them on the selling platform then get 10 or 15 but you're so burned out and they almost look like they were done in a factory because there there are going to be small mistakes made now not say that you can't crank out that many just suggesting that i wouldn't recommend it because you're going to start making what i say is a factory type doll and you're going to be selling a factory type product and you don't want that all right so kind of gossiping while we move right along with this um i'm definitely due for the second injections fairly soon i do intend on getting this baby on fairly soon i did intend on getting her on as my june addition but um we definitely nowhere near having her ready we're probably looking at maybe by this weekend if i can get um a couple of hours of hair in every day and definitely but see we still have to assemble her and we still have to get her get her wardrobe and everything together and with me i'm finding it easier to just buy her a few things and then when she's purchased talk with my buyer about where they want to go with the baby so that it's more personalized i like doing that so that's kind of the route I've decided to take with rooting, with um selling them. Um, but um yeah, you we definitely have to get the hair done. We're definitely looking at probably about ten or fifteen hours on that. We're definitely have to get her her wardrobe. I cheated. I do have clothes for her, but we are gonna have a sesh on clothes. Cause if you're like me, that's really my sell. And then if you have to understand that people buy these dolls because they want to have this human connection with their baby and they want to feel like they have this real child that they're now taking care of so yeah we're definitely will talk about that in the future um i'm pretty sure you've heard everybody's opinion on that but yeah it's always nice to have another one so this is definitely what i will be doing for the next couple of hours i hope you guys are going to have a great week it is a memorial day week memorial day video <laughs> but um so yeah I'm, I'm not barbecuing or anything i hope you're going to find something fun to get into but i'm going to be doing this and you see this little patch we are almost 17 minutes in i'm almost done with that and i'm almost done with the little pitch of hair that I had in my head and you definitely what I do is kind of weave in between to make sure that you're getting it so that it's a full patch on her head and not just just um, in spaces but you're always going to go back in between part the patch a little bit and if you see gaps definitely want to go ahead and get those filled that's why I do it in sessions sections sections so that if i finish super fast one i know if i finish super fast i'm definitely gonna have to go back and add hair in places so prepare for that you're going to be adding hair because you want to make sure she has a full head of hair first those hair people like me who is just definitely in it for the hair all right guys that's gonna i'm gonna pause it right there or wrap up right there hope you're having a great day great memorial day we'll definitely try to get her hair knocked out this week so that we can go to reborn 103 where we're actually going to put her on i came to the conclusion if she doesn't sell the first go for the amount of money that i'm going to put her on for i may just keep her for a while and enjoy her myself and then try to put her back on at possibly a what i would say kind of a hurt hit hurting myself a re more reasonable price but definitely not she's definitely not going to be a cheap sell because she is very expensive to make but so i need to make sure i'm not having someone say oh but her for 200 uh no i paid 200 just for the kit so we're definitely not going to do that so um yeah so reasonable offers the second go around i usually kind of consider 
but the first go around it, it falls where I'm putting her price at the then you can definitely rest assured that her bid starting bid is um, reflection of my labor and her costs and the buy now product the buy now price is a reflection of a full box opening and and um every all the what they say fireworks that come come with getting a baby so you, it's definitely going to be more expensive because it's going to be more expensive for me to do and definitely with her being such an expensive investment she's going to be insured when she comes and she you're going to have to sign to get her and that kind of great stuff but yeah y'all have a great afternoon and when i come back i'm going to show you how i do my edging and I hopefully will have her done enough that I can show you how I am going to do her eyelashes and eyebrows. So we're going to definitely hit on that next time and try to get those knocked out. And yeah, we'll see you then. Have a great one.